There is no such thing as the public domain. Allow me to explain. The public domain is a term that's been passed around where information or data has been made available publicly on one service or another. Whether that's an old fashioned telephone book or Twitter, LinkedIn or any other social media platform. Where the information or data, personal data or otherwise has been made available to the general public by one of these services. This is what we refer to as the public domain. However, the term public domain gives a lot of people a certain understanding, a misunderstanding, if you will, as to what the public domain is, how it works, and how it relates to data protection laws. Welcome back, I'm the Black Barbarossa, helping you to understand law, and in this video, talking about your personal data and what your rights are if you've made your data available in the public domain on a social media platform, for example. So, following my video about Bot Sentinel and whether it should be complying with GDPR, my conclusion is that it does have to comply with GDPR. Somebody sent me a direct message who had clearly misunderstood this term of public domain, thinking that if information is put out there for the public to see, then they lose all rights over that data and other companies can do anything they wish with it. That is fundamentally misguided and not true, hence the follow-up video to help you understand it. So when you sign up to a service, let's say Twitter, because that was the example that I was using. When you sign up to a service such as Twitter and you sign up to their terms and conditions, of course, you are agreeing to the privacy policy and the terms of conditions of Twitter and using Twitter and making your information, such as your tweets and your bio and your handle and so on, publicly available so that other people can see them. Twitter, of course, in its terms and conditions, has subsets of terms and conditions that apply to other processors that might access their data via their API, such as Bot Sentinel. In the case of Bot Sentinel and any others like it, they have to comply with Twitter's own terms and conditions on how to use that data that they pull from the databases that are owned and operated by Twitter. But one fact that many people overlook is that even though that information or data was publicly available in the first place and someone else such as Bot Sentinel will pull this data from Twitter, they don't seem to realize that that then makes Bot Sentinel in and of itself the data controller of the data that they've pulled from Twitter, even if they haven't yet made any modifications or any other processes in respect of the data. In the case of Bot Sentinel, however, they are running an analysis on this data and then profiling the user, in effect, creating new data in respect of that data subject. And the second thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize is that the data subject in question retain all of their rights under GDPR regardless of it being a third party that has obtained the data that was publicly available in the first place. In order to process the data of a subject in the European Union at all, there must be a lawful basis for it, one of which might be consent. But since many people have never used Bot Sentinel, much less consented to the use of their data, consent is certainly not going to apply in those cases. So there must be some other legitimate or lawful basis. But this basis would then have to be weighed and balanced against the rights of the individual data subject. The UK's Information Commissioner's Office, which is the regulator for data protection in the United Kingdom, summarizes a three-part test as being firstly, there must be a purpose, which is pursuing a legitimate interest. Now, in the interests of an insurance company or a bank, that might be much more understandable in that they might look for publicly available information, such as the electorate roll or records at company's house, for example. That might be a legitimate interest. The second part is a necessity test, whether the processing is necessary for that purpose. But thirdly, and rather importantly, a balancing test. Do the individual's interests override this legitimate interest? And this concept of the individual's interests may well override the interests of the third party processing their data if the data is being used outside of a purpose that the individual might reasonably expect or agree for it to be used in the first place. Now, as I said in my previous video, GDPR applies whether or not the processor is inside or outside of the European Union. If the processing of data of a data subject who is within the Union is being processed, that data subject retains certain rights in respect of that processing, regardless of whether the processor is outside of the union. Those rights notably include the right to be informed about the collection and the use of their personal data, the right to access personal data and supplementary information, the right to have inaccurate personal data rectified 
or completed if it's incomplete, and rather importantly, the right to erasure, which is also known as the right to be forgotten. The circumstances where you may not be able to get this removed is, for example, law enforcement or tax audits or any kind of national security or official investigations. In those situations, they would not be forced to erase your data upon request. But any otherwise private body that's processing your data for the purposes of, let's say, analysis and profiling, if you were to file a request for erasure, they would have to accede to your request, in other words, erase your data upon request in order to be compliant with GDPR. Just a note on the right to be informed, if your information is to be used for marketing, for example, you are to be told straight away. If your data is to be used for anything else, you must be told as soon as possible, but at least after a month of the data being used. But as in the case of Bot Sentinel, whose website says that it tracks all accounts, I would ask you the question of whether you have been told that your data has been collected if you are in fact a Twitter user. And just in case anyone remains in any doubt as to data in the public domain being used by a third party and GDPR still applies, I've had this confirmed directly with the Information Commissioner's Office myself. This is the position. GDPR applies regardless of where the data processor is if it's processing data of a subject within the European Union. Moreover, each individual retains their GDPR rights regardless of the information being in the public domain, as I've explained. Just because it's being publicly made available does not mean that they lose those rights, which includes the right of erasure. Because the third party becomes a data controller for the purposes of data protection law and for the purposes of GDPR. And GDPR, you've probably heard in the news because of the hefty fines they hand out, because of a breach of GDPR. Notably, Amazon was fined 746 million euros, which is equivalent to 877 million dollars. WhatsApp was fined 225 million euros, which is around 255 million dollars. And Google Island was fined 90 million euros, which is over 100 million dollars. And for those companies that believe that they can process publicly available data without informing the data subject, the Polish Data Protection Authority had other ideas when they fined Biznode over 200,000 euros for doing exactly this. So if you are a subject within the European Union or within the United Kingdom and you feel that a company is processing your publicly available personal data, you have several rights under GDPR, which I will link in the description below, including the right for it to be erased, which the last time I checked, Bot Sentinel's website said that they do not remove Twitter handles from its website, which in my view, on the face of it, is a breach of GDPR. So as always, this video cannot be taken as legal advice, but it is a general overview once again of GDPR and your rights, even though you may have put your information yourself in the public domain as it's known, which really just means on a website that other people can access publicly on payment or otherwise. I hope you found this video interesting. Please do like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.